Yo, 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 what's going on guys? Yeah, listen, we've just been trying to sort out this new setup we've got. So yeah, please bear with us, but we're all good to go right now, guys. What's everyone saying? Forgive me for the delay, all right, but it's all love. Are you guys ready? Yeah, I'm gonna make it short and sweet for you. We've got a new cell, we've got a couple of TV issues, but you know what? Happy days, man, we are on. Let's have a conversation. I hope everyone's doing all good, man. <laughs> Sell you some toilet paper, huh? But come on, man, the logic is there though, yeah? People that come into the game of trading, man. Let me turn this music down. People that come into the game of trading, they wanna make money. If you want to make money, you can try and sell toilet paper. You'll probably make the same amount of money even more. But if you're here to come and trade, you have to learn the game. And that's the nature of it, guys. <laughs> All right, let's flip over to MT4, guys. What's going on? Look at that nice little transition right there. 
How you doing, Crypto Grind? What's good? May the OBS be with me, my friend. <laughs> Thank you very much, brother. <laughs> with inflation. <laughs> That's all good. That's all good. Yeah, transitions are all back. We've flipped over to OBS, guys. And here's a little bit of a an aha moment for us. So I've been running on my computer's CPU. Well, yeah, from what I understand. And I haven't been using my graphics card at all, which is why the streams were laggy and MT4 was taking forever to switch up. But now, I mean, look, MT4 is moving sweet. So... Let's have a conversation. Welcome to the Traders Reality. Whoever's here, if you're new, welcome to the chaos that we call trading. Let's talk about what Bitcoin has been doing. Now, yes, Bitcoin has been dropping. There's no two ways about that. But it's only really been dropping since what? Let me move this over here. Can't even do that, actually. Now nah, I ain't going to bubble with it. Okay, then. Cool. Let's flip over to the one hour time frame because the one hour time frame is exactly what we need to base our decisions on. Okay, so boomers of this tech. <laughs> yeah, we've come a long time. Even got a cursor. I mean, look at that. Courtesy of Mike Dutch. And then when you select something, it actually flips over to a trader's reality head. If I do it on another, ch um, bring up a website. But anyway, I'll get to that in a second. They don't do any more crypto. Yeah, there's a way around that, Rich. Uh, there is a way around that. There's a couple of guys in the Discord that are aware how to get around that. All legitimately as well. Something to do with something else. But, um, yeah, it's all good, man. Dutch has done some good moves on the stream. All right, then. Here we go. So, let's have a conversation. Bitcoin. All right? Frankly, Bitcoin hasn't gone anywhere. You see, only a few days ago, everyone was like Bitcoin to the moon when it was rising. And now everyone's like Bitcoin down to the depths of hell now that it's dropping. Well, it's not really gone anywhere that it hasn't been before. All right. Don't become fearful over what people are saying in and around the world. Articles, you know, they're there to install fear. They're going to say something to get you to read it because there's a lot of interest around cryptocurrency. But your true understanding and the true indication of what to expect is reflected in the charts. All right. There's no there's nothing else that you need other than the chart itself. All right. Now, in today's topic, I'm going to be talking about the market maker. How is he able to move price? How is that going to be reflected with what Bitcoin's going to do next? All right. This is true. Expect the unexpected. Welcome to the realm of uncertainty. You think this game's got guarantees? No. But I can guarantee to you that if you collate enough confluences... Now, confluences is a term used to bring as many favorable elements of trading before you place a trade. Okay? Bring those elements together so when they all meet up, the chance of your trade may go in your favor. All right? Now, let's consider the following. Firstly, let's talk about what she's done today. And where we're we coming out from. So this move that happened on Monday, this would be your false move. Okay. Monday initiates a false move. Market maker decides to step in. Okay. And pump price to the high. He induces traders to believe that price is now going to keep rising. This is how he gets his orders filled. All right, if we look left, we are recovering vector candles in this zone. Flip onto the 15 minute time frame and you will see a Bitcoin pretty much recovered previous zones. Where are we at? There she is. Nice little vector candle right there. You see that little red, red vector candle right there? That was a previous area the market maker decides to open his positions. He opens long when price drops. Okay. What's important is how do we apply that concept to the way price is moving right now? Well, look, we do have one more pool of liquidity down here. Okay. Now, the factors that are in play for Bitcoin to potentially come back down to this point, because we are near a whole number. Okay. Whole numbers act like magnets in the chart. 
like the daily open, all right, and the whole numbers. So here on this chart, you can see the daily open. All right, check this out. This purple line is the daily open. So it's good to pay attention to what price does in and around that zone. All right. So today, Bitcoin decides to hit this zone three times. And it's always on the third hit. All right. It's where they're going to probably initiate their intention from the first place. All right. What could we see in this zone that were giving us the clues that the market maker was going to move price down lower? All right. Well, firstly, we need to consider the following. Asia. So for anybody that is new to the stream, okay, just so I know my audience, how many are you are brand new to this stream coming into it tonight? Can you just please let me know. Awkward, how you doing, bro? Newish, okay. Shock, if it's blurry, you might need to change it to 1080p. Okay, wonderful. Okay then, cool. Alright then, so. Wonderful, thank you for passing through. Here we go. This one's for you guys, alright. In front of you right now is a trading day. Okay, so I'm going to get my box. Okay. And I'm going to make draw background. So this is a whole trading day from here. That is a trading day. This whole boxed off area right here. This is a whole day. This green box is the Asian session. All right. This area here is the UK session coming into the New York session. All right. Now, there are a number of factors that come into play within each session, which is pretty much going to determine what is going to happen with price throughout the sessions. The Asian session, which is this green boxed off area, is eight hours long. All right. This session usually sets up price for the UK and New York. Now, UK, when it comes for the UK's turn to start trading, they're either going to continue with the intention of Asia or they're going to complete the intention of Asia. Okay, there's a big difference. Because if Asia are trying to move price higher for the market maker to effectively build his shorts at a higher possible price, right? The UK are probably going to try and do the same and thus move price higher when it comes out of the Asian zone. Okay, so here's an example of that. Let me find the Asian session. Here we go. Look at this. So on Monday, this is what they did. The Asian session sent price to the highs, came back down and then moved it one more time. The UK session, as it came to a close, the Asian session, this green line here, as it came to a close, price made one last attempt up towards the highs. Now for the trained eye, they would have sent that a head and shoulders formation would be forming, which is a variation of an M pattern. Now, psychologically, there's something going on here, all right? You can imagine how many moon boys stepped in on this chart right here when they saw this pattern. They saw these big green vector candles coming into the highs. They pull back. The moon boy feels like he's missed out on a move to the upside. The market maker induces him to believe that price is going back to the 50 so he can buy the dip. The moon boy gets excited. He starts adding positions. He waits for conviction. Green vector candle market maker shows his presence. He moves price higher. Stopping volume candle. I will go over these terms very shortly for the new guys. From that point, price starts to trail up again. Now the moon boy is looking left thinking, oh great, it's going to take out this zone. I'm going to put a couple of orders up here. All right, so lots of orders are coming in, in and around this zone. Then what happens? We're approaching the 35k mark. All right. Uh, sorry, the right. Sorry, we're approaching the whole number, just above the whole number of 35, 34 500 okay where is that just there okay price spikes up hits all those orders then comes straight back down so conventional wisdom will tell you okay that that is a rejection of price all right let me zoom in and show you 
That right there. Conventional wisdom tells people, all right, uh, a pin bar is a rejection of price. Nah. It's not a rejection of price. Supply and demand will tell you that no one is interested with price up there. And that is the biggest fallacy that everyone comes to these marketplace believing. This pin bar right here, someone went long at that point. Because in order for it to become a pin bar, there had to be someone's order sitting right there. So look at the context. Price is rising. Big, green, powerful candles. It's moving away from the moving averages. People are getting excited. Bitcoin's rising. It pulls back. Quickly buy the dip. People buy the dip. They start getting committed. It spikes up. Those retail traders who got in long here or got in long here are now committed with this candle. So market maker keeps price up in that zone and then snaps it back. Brings it down and hits the liquidations and the stops for the guys who initially went long. Then it rides it all the way back down. Gives them one last attempt, which is where the UK session comes in. So, in the Asian session, the market makers have hit the high twice. All right. Now the UK comes on board and says, yo, what's been going on in Asia? They look at the chart and they say, right, we can see that there's dead money up here. There's liquidity for us to take advantage of some longs or shorts that we built. So Asia gets on the phone to the market makers in the UK, in Europe, and effectively tells them where the liquidity is trapped. The UK then has one thing to do. It either continues to add to that liquidity, which is what they initiated here. They made the retail trader believe that the 50 EMA, like last time, was another opportunity to buy the dip. So what happens? They move price higher. See a green vector candle here. Brinks box. Price rejects that zone in a split second. Throws off all the retail traders. All right. Then what happens? Market maker then hits another high. But notice what it does. It doesn't take out the Brinks area, this area or this area. Why? Because liquidity is trapped in this zone. Okay. Now, if liquidity is trapped in this zone, that means that the market makers know that they can exploit this area because there is a bag of stops in this area, which is why the next few candles, the market maker tests the willpower of the moon boy or the retail trader and how long he's going to hold his position. And believe it or not, there are traders who set a stop here and try and move it and add to their liquidations, add the margin, keep moving it until they can't add any more to the point where they end up getting closed out by this big bad boy vector candle, which happens to recover the previous intention by the market maker on the left side. Remember, the market maker doesn't go long when price is rising. He goes long when price is dropping. At the same token, he doesn't go short at the lowest price. That's what the retail trader does. He goes short when price is dropping. No, the market maker goes short when price is rising because he wants to get the best possible fill at the highest point so that he can start offloading his shorts with the most amount of liquidity that is trapped to the upside. Have I got your attention? Well, Ronald, step out of the room, bro. Cool. Ronald, what a name. Anyways, here we go. Let's have a conversation about what's happening now. So I've given you a little bit of a breakdown on how the market maker works. Okay. Most people understand that when price is dropping, it's because the sellers are in control. Well, that's wrong. Yeah. I'm actually vaping. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Bitcoin right now is sitting at a very important point in the chart. There's a good chance that he, she will actually come down to the 32 zone. Why? Because it's a point of interest. Because 90% of people that come into this crypto game or the stock market game, Forex game, they base their decisions on what, what price is. 
You only hear people talking about Bitcoin at 35, 31, 10,000, 200,000, 400,000. These numbers are impressionable. Okay? People do things based on numbers. All right? You don't hear anyone talking about anything else other than the fact that what price it's going to be. What better factor does the market maker have to influence price to get to a certain point? Because he knows that's where the liquidity is set. Now, I know if some of you guys are using uh, maybe exo charts or trading light, I can guarantee to you, you pull up all the whole numbers. I can guarantee to you there is a plethora of orders, all big orders sitting at the 32,000 mark, 32,500. 33,000 and 33,500. You keep going through the chart and I promise you, you will see those numbers there. Yeah. <laughs> Man, get out of my stream, bro. Get out, bro. Someone get him out, man. Big Al, did you check it? No, to be honest, I, I've, I've had a look at exo charts, okay? But I've been trading this strategy, what? Six, seven years solid, man. All right, been in the game 15. And... This is my exo charts. This is how I understand it. Because taking the concept of the market maker's behavior with exo charts, before exo charts, I understood that price makes movements at and around the 32k mark, 33k mark, whole numbers. They're impressionable numbers. Why? Look at marketing, day to day marketing, walk into a shop. All right. What do you see as the price that they want you to pay? It's never a round number unless it's cheap. If you walk into a shop and you see a price, it's always $19.99, $55.99, $69.99, $99.99. It's never the full amount. Why? Because you don't conceive it to be expensive if it's not a round number. Right? This is coming from marketing geniuses. Right? They know what they're doing. But then whenever you want to see a discount, what's the price? It's a whole number. Yeah? It's a whole number. All right. 100 pounds off, 50 pounds off. The money that they don't, you know, they want you to spend as such, you know, to get you to do something. It's a whole number. Yeah. What are my predictions? I don't necessarily give predictions, but I will project price. This is for short term day traders. I have no interest in what Bitcoin's going to do in the next month or the next week. I'm looking at what it's going to do now for the next five, six, ten hours. All right. So this is where I'm look expecting Bitcoin to get to. And don't worry, I do flip over to TradingView. Don't worry, we do have TradingView in sight. Okay, we've got our same indicators all on TradingView. All right. Now. The strategy that I deploy is taken. This is for the new guys. All right. I'm going to roll out to you guys right now. Okay. Let me break it to you quite simply. If you are new to this stream, okay, make your way over to the discord. All right. There's a plethora of help in there. The channel itself has many videos. Okay. If you want to look further into the actual strategy, you can join the Patreons. It's a big family over there. And we talk about price real time and we break things down. All right. But what this stream is designed to do is effectively give you everything to help you understand how this market works. Go back and look in the previous streams. There's over 900 hours worth of streams telling you exactly how price moves. We make projections and they play out. All right. When everyone's going crazy at Bitcoin dropping off, we're getting ready to slap up some buys. Because we understand how the market maker moves price. All right. So let me explain to you what we're seeing right now. And then you'll have an understanding. Flipping out to the one hour time frame. Check this out. Frankly, 
Bitcoin hasn't gone anywhere. Now, there is speculation on YouTube that there's this big volatility squeeze that is happening and Bitcoin is going to explode. Okay, just about to check that out, Jay. No worries. People are talking about Bitcoin exploding all based on a volatility indicator. If that is what people are basing their decisions on, there is no hope for people. All right, all because of the Bollinger Band. When market makers, when you understand how they build their positions, right? I'm going to clear up my chart, all right? Get rid of some of this stuff because this chart itself, I started streaming in January, okay? And <laughs> I have not taken off any of the notes. And you've seen W's and patterns that have played out and it's worked beautifully, all right? And I am going to take snapshots of everything from January all the way through to now, all right? This is my scrapbook, if you will. So, a couple of weeks ago, Bitcoin formed this big W pattern. This is a psychological pattern for those who are new. Why is it a psychological pattern? It's a pattern designed to set traders up to believe one thing is happening against another. All right. So let's take it back to the beginning. Look at what Bitcoin did from this high. Okay. Hits the 800 EMA. All right. Starts to drop. Now you see these red vector candles as price is coming down. To the naked eye, you will think that people are selling and people believe that it's the retail trader that is selling. No, it's not the retail trader that is selling because there is a concept that is so flawed in this game that people pay more attention to, which is why 95% of people lose in this game. Because 95% of people believe that when price is rising, the buyers are in control and that when price is dropping, they believe that the sellers are in control. All right. What's the paradox? Well, I'll tell you what it is. When price rises, in order for you to buy, what must happen? What has to happen? Who's in here? Correct. People have to sell. You can't walk into an empty shop and demand the person at the counter and say to him, I'd like to buy everything. He'll turn around to you and say, what are you talking about, bro? There's nothing for me to sell. You're not going to still stand there and be like, yo, man, I, I want to buy something. I, I can't sell you anything. That's what he will say to you. The same concept applies in the market. When buyers come to the market, they get sold to. Why do they get sold to? Because, of course, when you come to this game, you want to make some money, don't you? So your buy order is matched with a contract opposite your order. Why? Because when you want to sell your position in a profit, where are you going to get the liquidity from? You're going to get it from the contract that is against you. Likewise, when price is dropping, all right, you can't sell anything if no one's going to buy it. All right? So when you do want to sell your short, where are you going to get the liquidity from? From the contract that's against you, which is the buy. And who gives you the contract's opposite? The market maker. He matches your liquidity, your exposure. Okay. And then when price is moving in your favored direction, when you close a profit, you take his money that was designed to be taken from you if your position ended in a loss. Now, when you are in a loss on your buy, what do you do? You sell it. That sell triggers the buy order for the market maker. Okay? So, when you see price rising, the market maker is tri tra well, tricking the retail trader to believing that we've got a bullish market. The term bullish and bearish don't sit right with me because they are emotional triggers. You say the word bullish Bitcoin, people run to their phones, quickly try and buy some Bitcoin. Well, you guys that are buying the Bitcoin when you see those bullish terms, you are feeding the market maker's intention. Just pay attention to the chart. Look up for every green vector candle you see when price is rising, there's always going to be corresponding candles to the right of it. Look here. Price drops. Vector candle recovery. Price rises. Candle recovery. Down to this point. Okay. Look at this candle. That little green zone there. Look right. Recovers it. Look at this, green candle, candle recovers it. Come back again, 
Price rises up here. Recovery, recovery, recovery. And this area always ends up coming back to this area. Come up here. Price rises up. Pump, recovery, down to there. Price rises up. And again, you see the pattern. It happens over and over again. Why? Because the market maker can't deviate, deviate away from human nature. Human nature doesn't change, my friends. Yeah? Human nature doesn't change. As long as there will be fear and greed, we will always have a market. All right? So by that simple concept of price being manipulated because it is and for anyone that thinks that this place is a free market please don't all right let me give you an example let's take a trip down memory lane look at this look at what happened last week or a couple of weeks back when was it on the 22nd of june sorry 22nd of june i bet everybody remembers this day everyone remember when bitcoin dropped yeah everyone remembers that at this this vector candle right here people were talking about bitcoin going down to 11 grand 13 grand okay but we were watching this and we were aware that when we saw the presence of the vector candle at the lows we understood that the market maker is getting people committed to the downside so he can build his lungs at the lowest possible price so that when he starts to move price higher he gets the best feel this daily open line right there that day bitcoin was down 15 percent nearly and in the same session which is induced by the new york reversal price comes all the way up and even closes higher people say this is a free market nah sorry guys we're in the market makers territory this is their playground this is their business model and so many people try and come and think that they can exploit it all right mathematically with indicators but unless you actually understand the business model itself. What can I say to you? You're challenging their business model. Follow them. Why challenge them? Follow them. When they pay out, take it. Yeah? So. For those people that want the projections. Bitcoin right now is trading below the 50 EMA. The 50 EMA on this chart is this blue thick line here. With a cloud around it which is like a volatility band you see the white line which is the 200 ema okay what's going on here i ain't even going to talk about usd jpy and just for the record as well i've been trade i've been in the game of trading for 15 years all right. My journey started 15 years ago and I've been trading non-stop pretty much for 11 years. All right. 12 this year. OK. And I've been in Forex. I'll always be in Forex. I came to cryptocurrency on January the 21st to try and apply this same concept. And we've not looked back. However, I have been trading dollar yen. I traded dollar yen straight for six years. I didn't change any other currency pair. It was just dollar yen because she respects the levels. All right. Now. Bitcoin as itself right now is trading downwards. So they are building positions. Look at the red vector candles. Now, a vector candle implies that this is where price exchanged hands at its highest possible point or lowest possible point. These vector candles are based on tick volume. All right. You want to see tick volume? This is how it moves. Sorry if you're looking at this chart at night, but check this out. This chart right here. Now, this software, guys, is IC Markets. If you want to download it, links are in the description if you want to. It's free of charge, okay? This platform here is based on an electronic central network, right? Co very common in Forex. We're all connected to a central server. That server spits out orders. So if I place an order, my order gets pumped to that server. My order gets matched with liquidity from a bank, from a government, from an investment pool, wherever, okay? The market maker facilitates that transaction. He provides liquidity to me. He provides liquidity to them. Happy days. All right. 
this is a tick chart so for every time price moves okay that is an order coming in now each vector candle that appears as a red candle that is when it's traded at its maximum point and closed lower likewise when you see a green vector candle it's trading at its highest point and closing higher so we understand green candles to be a positive thing and red candles to be a negative thing flip it on its head green candles do imply price is going up but it's a setup if the concept of the green candle was valid right because if you were to just pull up a random chart right now of bitcoin all right and just base it on box standard settings i mean i know what a lot of people like to do as well all right they like to um they like to customize their indicators all right they like to put on different colors you can see these are black and white all right i can change all of that and go to colors right there change the green bar up and sorry yeah a bull candle can be green and a bear candle can be red 95 percent of traders are looking at this sort of thing all right it doesn't look too clear because i need to change that the bar up to white bar up down to white right there okay so that's easier on the eyes so when you see these here it is right there that position that i was telling you about there it is right there that's a big green powerful candle all right people looking at that are thinking yo look bitcoin is moving up it's moving get in go and buy bitcoin but then when you flip onto this chart, it's a different story because we understand that market makers get in at these candles and build their shorts at the highest price. How is it that a big vector candle like that ends up starting a move to the downside? Just have a word with yourself and try and think, why does that happen? Why is it a big, powerful candle, which to the naked eye on this chart right here is telling you that price is moving up? So if you didn't have that there and you saw that candle right here, look to the far right, you would think, yeah, that's a big move to the upside. I'm getting in. But then when you look at it, look what it's done. Yeah, you could, John, you can do that, actually. You can change the text name color as well. You can just right click, go to properties and play around with this information right here. OK, you can change the foreground change it to a different color make it blue see like that you can get rid of the background grid okay but do you get my idea of what's going on here yeah look at it happening here as well price coming up comes down again big green candles it triggers people to do something it tells them to get in because bitcoin is rising right at the same token look at this price starts to drop they're building their positions to go short why is it at the lowest point in the chart where you see the biggest candle to the downside is where the part is when it changes all right now it's easy for me to talk in hindsight but go back in the previous streams and i can promise you that we pull out these points and you see price always moving away from these notable areas of interest yeah so back to bitcoin bitcoin forms this pattern this pattern up here would be deemed as an m formation but it's a very small one why because when price is, zo is zoning okay you have to start looking at bigger patterns now this is all also in relation to the people that are actually swing trading but me personally as a scalper stroke swing trader depends on what i'm actually trading like for me dollar yen I'll take scalps if I'm scalping, but I also like to build positions with dollar yen. Okay. Um, I think, I think, oh yeah, I'm in one right now. Got about 23 trades open on here. We managed to take an entry at the pullback of the green vector candle earlier today. And we managed to open 23 trades at that point. Now I've opened a few more up here, sorry. So in total, 23. I'm just waiting for now dollar yen to come back and test up towards the 110, 800 zone okay so i'm waiting for asia to step in and do her business all right some good news for dollar yen today but was it good news or not but looking at the bigger picture you can see that she's recovered all of this red vector candle look at that move to the upside yeah 
by the same token of what I've just explained to you about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. It's the same thing that's happening right here with dollar yen. If anything, with dollar yen, it's actually more, how can I be subtle when saying this? It's like sort of more reliable. Or should I say, you've got a better chance at seeing vector candles getting recovered in Forex as opposed to crypto because cryptocurrency is very heavily manipulated. All right, all it takes is someone to speak on YouTube or on Twitter and price can get thrown about. The last time Forex had that sort of exposure was when Trump was in power. All right. And when Trump was talking about the relationship with China, whenever he hit Twitter, it was always going to be about the relationship with China. And that had detrimental effects to dollar yen. And it had positive effects as well. But they didn't like that instability. Remember, Forex is a six point five trillion dollar daily turnover market. All right. You can't allow one person to really switch things up and say things on the tweet. Now, cryptocurrency is unregulated. So really, anyone can say whatever they want. They're going to reflect that in price. Now, what's good about it is this. There's been a plethora of information coming out about cryptocurrency. People are adopting it. People are investing in it. You know, I think it's crypto.com managed to get the contract with UFC, if I'm correct. All right. You had Anonymous put out a video today talking about cryptocurrency is going to be the future and everything like that. But what has cryptocurrency done? Nothing. It's not moving. So it's like now news ain't really being news anymore. And we're all only waiting for a heavyweight to step in and start talking about it to really induce the price. And that's the sad truth about what's going on in cryptocurrency. All it takes is a tweet to throw people off. All right. As it stands right now, Bitcoin is stuck in this 35, 32 range. Because there's no clear definitive direction. It's all systems go in either direction. All that we have left is the following. We can only see vector candles. Now, as a short term day trader, I will try and exploit this. All right. I can see divergence coming in at the lows and we determine divergence with an RSI. Look, as price is dropping lower, the RSI is rising. It's back outside the volatility band and the first hit to the low. And now it's back inside the volatility band, forming a, a little W formation at the lows. OK. I mean, I would look at the RSI to make sure that, you know, to solidify my confluence. But it's not one thing that I rely on. OK. Come on. What is this? There we go. So looking at price, the 32K mark is in sight. They could actually spike to hit this point and then make their move. Because we've got three pushes to the low. We've got one, two, three vector candles. We may get one more. If we don't get that final push to the downside, all right, Bitcoin is likely to come back up and try and hit the 50 EMA and form a pattern. This is ideally what we may expect to happen. And this pattern will be like so. Now, what we do need to consider is this. Because it's a small pattern, right there's a good chance it might fail so there's no trade for us just yet because ideally what we're waiting for is price to come down into the lows come back up towards the um, 50 ema come back down again but not trade too close to the first leg of this w formation and then shift out the zone that's what we're expecting or ideally what an ideal scenario would be and our first projection point would be what this area here why because that's the point in the chart where the market maker started building his longs. So by price coming up to this point, we would anticipate it to come and break away from that point and go higher. So we are in the waiting game. Consider Ethereum. Ethereum, quite frankly with you, is trading technically better than what Bitcoin is. She's showing clear direction. She's coming away from a zone, moving back into a zone, but it's Bitcoin that's being held. Now, the great news about Ethereum is this, guys. Ethereum is still within its peak formation. All right. It's still within this big W formation. For all we know, for the guys who are holding, all the hodlers, this could be the setup for what will be deemed as a huge W formation. All right. Got the pattern right there. Move that. Switch that go across this could be a massive w formation for ethereum 
Now, the only way that this pattern would be invalidated is if price does come down lower and breaks below this point right here. Now, funnily enough, look at the vector candle. Can you see that green vector candle? Look at where price is. Funny story, isn't it? Why has it come back down to that point? Look. Look at where price is right there. Sat now tapping that pool of liquidity. So Ethereum is likely to come down a little bit lower to fulfill the obligation of that previous liquidity pool right there. And that is where we have our decision. Ethereum can actually come all the way down to 1853, even lower down to 1810. And it will still be deemed as a valid pattern. Because then all these vector candles to the downside are going to be previous places that the market maker will want to get profit from because he built his longs at lower prices. So we may still see a little bit more consolidation from both Bitcoin and Ethereum. But it's crazy, isn't it, how Ethereum is moving, but Bitcoin is holding. Bitcoin ain't going nowhere, guys. Look at it. Now it's just a case of who's going to say something to really twist up what Bitcoin is going to do next. Bitcoin is still within this pattern that we drew a long time ago. For all we know, this could be another bigger pattern. All right. Third leg in its third leg of a W. So it could be deemed, yeah, we could say, not third leg, but we could say that this is an inverted head and shoulders pattern. All right. It could be possible. All right. But the thing is, it's stuck in a range. I'm not seeing clear intention by the market maker to break price down but look if there's something that you can notice about the chart forget all the actual w's and m's and what have you pay attention to the red vector candles right you can see vector one two three four five six seven eight why are they selling off right and not pushing price down think about that you see these big powerful candles, red candles that look like sell candles. But what they're doing is they're buying at the lowest possible point, okay, below one of the key notable numbers. Now we've got 35,000 here, right? Let me just line that up. You've also got 34,000 right there. And it's all happening below this point. Notice how every time, if I zoom in, look at where each vector candle breaks through. The red vector breaks through here, 34. Breaks through there, 34. Breaks through there, 34. That's not by chance. That's at the 34k mark. So do you understand when I'm saying the importance of these whole numbers? They break through below the 34 to get price filled at the lowest part in the chart of the 34 zone. They build their positions below it, move away, get a profit on those later. Build it again, get a profit, build it again, come back up, build it again. So that when they do break out higher, they would have got the best feel possible for these positions down at the lows. All right. So, guys, I think for you guys, don't get caught up. I know if you're holding Bitcoin cryptocurrency and you're seeing your portfolios getting pretty much tested, okay? But welcome to the nature of trading, you know? The problem with trading is most people step into it, right? And they only think that they can only make money. They don't ever think that they can lose. Or should I say that they don't really pay attention much to the idea of loss until it hits them really hard, okay? As holders... What Bitcoin's doing right now shouldn't really be applicable to you. Because if it was doing something right now that was affecting your portfolio to the point where you are biting your nails and you're not sleeping at night, do yourself a favor and take out your money, man. Protect your capital. And that's not financial advice. I'm telling you to look at things realistically. If you are a holder, what you need to do is behave like one and come and check out the charts once a month. Because you're investing in the idea of Bitcoin. You're not investing because Bitcoin is rising to the 50 EMA or to the 200 EMA. You're getting into cryptocurrency because you believe in the concept, the utility, and you have a belief system that tells you that it's going to be a favorable thing in the future. Yeah? 
There's no point in me being a scalper if I'm going to be holding my scalps at a loss with the mentality of a holder. Yeah? Doesn't make sense, does it? So, yeah, accumulating is what holders do. They accumulate. That's the basis of it. All right. Forex projection video. I'm going to give you a quick Forex projection right now with dollar yen. Okay. And we'll talk about gold as well. Let's actually have a conversation about gold. Look at what they're doing to gold. Remember when I said to you earlier on about Bitcoin? When they smacked price down and brought it back up. Let's just go back to that. There it is. Look at that. Down and up. Let me bring it on the one hour time frame so it's clearer for you. Down and back up. Flip over to gold. What do you see? Price drops and snaps all the way back up. Drops, snaps all the way back up. Yeah? Yeah. They are getting their shorts at the highest possible point on gold. Why? Because look, there's a bag of money down here. All right. We've hit the 800 EMA, not once, twice, but three times, maybe four with this little bit here. And every time we hit the 800 EMA, what do we see? We see notable volume at the highs, at the highs. Remember what I said earlier on? Why is it the big moves always happen when notable volume appears at the point where they want to trap the trader to believe it's going to break a move in one direction? And that is actually the trap to set them up to go in the opposite direction. Yeah? In future streams, I'll be diving more and more into this concept, guys. All right? For the past six, seven months, I've been zoning in on price action. And I've kind of like come away from teaching the idea of the market maker method. And I'm getting a lot of people coming in and asking questions. And I've been naive into thinking that they're going to get them answered at some point in one of the streams previously. But the previous streams are like four or five hours long. It's a demanding thing. Okay. So on that basis itself, I'm resetting the whole thing. I'm starting from scratch. We're going to talk about how to help you guys understand because the new person that comes in. They're going to be able to understand each stream, whether they're new or they've been here two, three days. They're going to get a good idea. If they want to dive further into the concept itself, they can either go back and watch all the previous streams. They can join the Discord, ask questions. They can join the Patreon. They can do whatever they like. I always advise people to go into the previous streams and just have a look at what you're getting into. All right. So that's gold for you. Dollar yen. Dollar Yen is coming out from a previous move to the downside. All right. First vector candle, recovery. I'm anticipating her to come back up into this area, which is why I'm waiting for this zone right here. This is where they may actually form a nice V-shaped pattern. Once it gets to that point, we'll see how good we are with our trade. I'm going to be holding this trade and I'll probably be adding to it as price moves in the desired direction all right so guys xrp for my guys who want xrp again xrp and ethereum well sorry xrp and bitcoin are actually trading sound it's like something is brewing all right we're waiting for something why is it that cryptocurrency ain't moving as much all right but this is why i'm starting to talk about forex all right, because Forex, if it's not moving on the bigger coins, I'll flip over to the smaller currencies, all right, and they'll be moving because there's two things in Forex, all right? It's called, fract well, one thing, it's called fractional disparity. When they move the majors, which is what they've done here today, they'll hold the minors or the crosses, as they say. If they hold the crosses, they'll move the majors, hold the majors, move the crosses. That's the fractional disparity, okay? And this is what you look for every day. Okay. Ah, yes. Patience on XRP, PC Shed. Most definitely, my friend. Most definitely. It's good that she trades like this, though. I like XRP. I will always like XRP. Do I like the way she trades? No. 
And when I see a big move like this by XRP, I know it's false. They're just going to bring it back down again. But when it trades, it moves. Yeah, she does make movements. Look at these big moves to the downside. Funnily enough, Vector Candle's getting recovered. We've got some more up here. So we're going to wait and see what happens. So, guys, mad love and respect to you guys, man. All right. It's been a pleasure. I hope you like the new stream set up as such. Okay. And moving forward, I ain't going to have that delay like I did today. I should have come on at half 10. Uh, well, actually 10 o'clock because I've got a schedule now. All right. But if you are new, feel free to like and subscribe. You don't have to. But if you've managed to learn something, I've done my job. All right. So if you want any more information, check out the Discord. Check out that community right there. It's a banging community. Crazy people in there, but it's all love in there. All right? And if you want to further the learning, head over to the Patreon. And we'll have a conversation there. All right? Guys, take care of yourselves. Mad love and respect to all of you. Okay? Peace.